The ACCC released their interim report on the water markets last month. Reading report, it isn't hard to look at the government's response to water markets in the Murray-Darling Basin and see the glass of water as half empty. The ACCC rightly pointed out excessive bureaucracy and a lack of transparency in the water trade. Their solution? More regulation from a regulator even more disconnected from the people living and farming in the basin. They couldn't be more wrong. If the Australian government wants to ensure our farmers have the water they need to feed the rest of us, they need to cut red tape, tie the water rights to the land, and stop environmental groups from leeching away at one of our most precious resources. Much like any other market, water price is driven by supply and demand, but the government has artificially restricted supply. They have capped the amount of water irrigators are allowed to use, saving the rest for the environment. The Murray-Darling Basin Authority was founded in 2007 with a budget of 13 billion, with a B, in taxpayer funds. The MDBA then inserted itself with its large pocketbook into the water buyback market. But unlike farmers who sent the water where it was most needed, the MDBA wastes 70% of the water on unnecessary environmental projects. To make things worse, environmental groups buy and hold on to water, further restricting the supply and investors and brokers seeing an opportunity to make it big on artificially inflated water prices have jumped into the fray. Farmers have been left with the dregs. There was a time when water rights were tied to the land, but the ACCC has rejected this proposal outright and put up straw man arguments against it. They argue that to tie water to the land would not allow for the water trade. But the water trade chugged along happily before the government inserted its abnormally large nose into the market. Now we have various government and environmental organizations fighting over who gets to divvy up water in drips. If the ACCC was serious about fixing the system, they would recommend less government, not more. The government doesn't need to manage markets. Markets equalize and everyone gets what they need at a price they are willing to pay. But when the government favors certain groups over others and normal people are forced to wade through mountains of paperwork, markets are distorted and people lose their livelihoods.